So we're going to talk about continuity of trigonometric functions. So let's look at number one. Immediately we see an x here. So, well, to get a function not continuous to find a discontinuity, well, if you plug in zero in for x, let's see, cosine of zero is one, right? But we have zero here. So the answer is straightforward. It's going to be continuous on all points except when x is equal to zero. Obviously, because you can't divide by zero. So that one is just straightforward. Let's look at another one. Y is equal to cosecant of 2x. These, to me, in my honest, op honest opinion as a student, uh, seems to be the most easiest on the front, but the most complicated. And what do I mean? Well, for me, I think of drawing, uh, graphing this function uh, to get my answer. And simply, you and, and you could think of it logically, but I just want to prove it algebra, um, you know, mathematically to you guys. All right? Because remember, when we're graphing cosecant and secant function, well, we got to graph sine and cosine first. So cosecant is related to sine. So I'm going to graph y is equal to sine of 2x, right? I know my amplitude is 1 because we take the coefficients as an absolute value. Amplitude is absolute, absolute value of the coefficient in front of sine, which is just 1 and 1. Right? And then we need two more important things. I need my period and my distance. So the period is 2 pi divided by b for sine, which equates to 2 pi divided by this two right here, because that anything with our x is or is or b divided by two, these two cancel out. So our period is actually pi. Our distance is our period divided by four. Right? And so the period is pi divided by four. So distance is actually pi over four. So why do we need all this important information? Right? We have no phase shift, which means that sine starts at zero. Right? Well, not starts at zero, but it starts in an intercept. We have no phase shift, so therefore we can start at zero. Sine starts at zero. Yes. Right? And we're going to an intercept. We're going to a maximum. Right? Well, the maximum we just add or distance to, which is pi over 4. All right, and it's going to come down to an intercept right here, which is just pi over 2, because we add pi over 4 again uh, to pi over 2. And then here, there's 3 pi over 4, etc., etc. We don't really care about this. Remember, wherever the graph intercepts the x-axis is where we have vertical asymptotes. You see? And then all we could do is just fill in these. And this will be the graph of y is equal to cosecant of 2x. Right, there's also a point down here. But the point is to show you this point right here. All right. It's discontinuous here. So therefore, my answer is going to be continuous on all points except when x is equal to pi over 2 plus pi pi n right and what does this tell us well that pi over 2 is discontinuous but remember these graphs go on forever and forever adding pi to pi over 2 will give us another vertical asymptote that's what this equation is telling us you see and so this n stands for where n is an integer, so just n is, is an integer. And that is very important. Uh, so that is very important. So this is the this is a notation I wrote. And certainly you could list them out. You could, so you could say pi over 2 and then uh, pi, because that will be the next vertical asymptote. And it will be the same thing. But this covers everything, this notation right here. Let's look at the last one, right? Remember, tangent is a little bit different. So 
And I'm going to need two things, a period, which is pi divided by b, yes, uh, all right, and so pi divided, pi, over, pi divided by pi over 2 is just 2, because these pi cancel out, right, and so the distance will be the period divided by 2. So the period divided by 2 is just 2 over 2, which is 1. Yes. So knowing this critical information, all right, well, we add our distance because it starts at 0. So at our distance, we get the first vertical asymptote. All right. This is just a trend of graph and trigonometric functions. After that, so at 1, we have our first vertical asymptote. After that, we add the period then. So to get the next vertical asymptote, we add a period. And this vertical asymptote will be at 3. And then the next one is at 5 because we add 2 and 2 and forever and ever. Right? And so the graph would look something like this. So if y is equal to 10, 2x. And this is just, just a pure sketch, guys. So don't... Uh, and this will be negative 1, and this will look something like this. Guys, don't kill me. This is just a, just a random sketch. All right, and so the answer to this question is where it's continuous in all points except where x is equal to... Continuous in all points except where x is equal to uh, 1 plus 2, 2n. Right, so we have one plus that two will give us another vertical asymptote uh, where n is an integer, where n is, uh, you know, an odd integer in this case, so not just any integer but an odd integer. You see, because we have one, three, we add two more to that, we get five. We add two more to that, we get seven. So this is where n is an odd integer. So again, uh, I think the, the basic trigonometric functions on the outside, they look easy. Uh, but for me, when I want to prove these, there's a lot more work that goes into just graphing and looking at it graphically.